All right, so what do we got right here? We have a shortcut or an alias, um, and uh, and what is it? Let's double click on it, and uh, it is a remote hard drive that is plugged into my router. So I have a one terabyte Seagate uh, free agent GoFlex um, uh, hard drive plugged in via USB to my router, and it streams everything. What makes this so awesome? Well, I'll tell you why. Because there's my iTunes library, okay? Everything I have in iTunes is right there. I'll even show you. If you go to iTunes, you go to Preferences, and then you go to Advanced, right there, there it is. That's the path I have set up. So all my music, all my movies, everything is all remote doesn't take up any space on my hard drive it's pretty awesome uh... i don't find any lag any slowness nothing um, as far as syncing or watching movies or listening to music it's all pretty it's almost like it's on my hard drive um, maybe it's because my router is pretty new and pretty um... up to date but uh... Um, i love it it's, it works out awesome that it doesn't take up any space on my hard drive but um, let's see what else can I show you? Oh, um, as far as uh, to show you how quick uh, the transfer rates are, I can uh, open up some movies and play a movie. Show you how there's uh, there's no lag; it'll play just fine and uh, stream the data. Um, see right here. That's the uh, that's it right there. That's the hard drive. But watch, I'll go ahead and play a movie. See? And all that right there, it's all streaming remotely from my uh, from my hard drive. No, no lag, no nothing. It's all remote. So any movie you want, anything. You don't have to have a hard drive plugged in, pulling you around like a ball and chain. Just stream everything. It's pretty, pretty cool. Now I gotta show you how to do it. Oh, one, one thing about this too is um, uh, your mobile apps will actually uh stay on your computer. Everything else you can have um, you can have uh on your hard drive. So this is the um, this is the setup I have. I have the uh, Cisco Linksys um, E4200, uh, the Forty Two Hundred, the version two. Uh, there's two versions. This one just came out in December, um, December twenty eleven. Uh, but um, uh, it's you know pretty uh, one of the top of the line in the market thing. But I mean you can get any router. Just make sure you know it's um, you know um, dual band wireless and um, you know, around the 300 to 450 megabits per second. Um, but the biggest thing um, is uh, it has to have, you know, a USB port for the hard drive. And um, when you look through, um, like, the description, make sure it says media server. It's got to have a media server on it. Um, you know, uh, people might say sometimes, they, uh, they go, hey, you know, um, these things, you know, 450 megabits per second, you know, you're never going to get that from your internet service provider, um, so you don't really need it. That's not true, because, yeah, I get, uh, I think, like, uh, 50 megabits per second from my internet service provider, but, see, I'm also streaming media, so I'm going to need that extra juice, um, and, uh, and, and it helps, too, because um, when I stream movies and I stream my iTunes, it doesn't lag, and, you know, when I uh, drag and drop a... Um, a movie from um, my computer to this hard drive or something like that I mean it takes almost as fast as it was plugged in itself to my computer so um, yeah that's why you want one that's kinda like uh, you know um, top of the line kinda or at least close to it so uh, we'll go through it in a minute um, but um, basically I want to discuss a few things uh, the first thing is that um, uh, you either have to um, as far as being compat the hard drive being compatible with streaming um, from your router and stuff, it has to be in one of one uh, two formats. 
it either has to be uh, NTFS, which is a Windows file system, um, or it has to be FAT32. Um, and if you're on a Mac, um, you have to have FAT32. Um, uh, if you're uh, on Windows, you can have one or the other. Um, but uh, basically, well, if you're on a Mac and you got Windows file system, you can actually read NTFS format on a uh, um, on a Mac, which basically means you can open the hard drive and look and and watch movies or whatever. But you can't drag and drop. You can't transfer. So you you can't read and write. You can only read. Um, so if you do have a hard drive and um, it's NTFS and you're on a Mac and uh, you can't read and write, basically um, the cool thing is, is Mac has a uh, built-in disk utility. And so first you want to take all your data on your external hard drive and you want to transfer it somewhere else safe and then format the hard drive. Now keep in mind whenever you're formatting a hard drive it's going to it's going to completely erase it. So have your data somewhere else, format it to whatever format you want and if you're on a Mac you need to uh, have a, um, you're going to open disk utility and I just plugged a, um, a hard drive in just so you can see but this is my hard drive right here. You click on it, you hit erase and then um, ms dash dot uh, and fat. That's um that's actually the format. That's fat thirty two. Okay. Um, see if you see this. This is uh um these are uh, Mac OS X uh, format hard drives. Um, right here X fat. That's a that's a flash drive format. But fat thirty two. Um, this is the format you want. This is one that's compatible for this uh, Cisco Linksys streaming. Um, so you want that one. And then you pick that one, and then you just click erase, and it would uh, erase everything on the hard drive, and make it that format. Um, uh, also, keep in mind, um, uh, FAT32, um, the maximum um, uh, per file can be is four gigabytes. So anything over four gigabytes, you can't put on that hard drive. Anything under four gigabytes is fair game. Uh, so that's that. You have the correct format of the hard drive, and you have it plugged in. Um, to your uh, your router. Oh, also on the uh, on the Cisco Linksys um, E forty two hundred. I don't know if it's just uh, the version two that I got or whatever. The um, the USB is really like you can't push it in all the way. Um, otherwise, it's it's the the uh, port itself is actually funky. It's really loose. Um, but you gotta like anyway just. If you have a hard drive that has a light that blinks, if it's plugged in, um, that's good because you just want to um, put the USB in until it starts blinking. I, I was wondering why it wasn't working. It's because um, the, the actual port itself is like um, is weird. If you push it all the way in, it's, it won't be connected. Um, so you kind of kind of push the USB port in until you see it, the light flashing, letting you know that it's connected. Um, and then... Uh, and then uh, you would type in, if you have a Cisco Linksys like me, you just open your browser, you uh, type in your IP address. This is the one for um, uh, the Cisco Linksys. You type in 192.168.1.1, and you hit enter. It asks you for your username and password. And then it will bring you to the setup, but you are going to click storage. And when you click storage, you should be looking at this right now. This won't be there yet because you haven't created this yet, but you'll see this, um, the uh, the actual hard drive plugged in, tell you the capacity, tell you free space, and then after that, you're gonna hit create chair. And when you do that, then, okay, there you go. And then this this is really easy. Uh, all you're doing is adding a folder onto that. Um, that hard drive so we can see where it's going um, and then you just name a folder and as you can see I named uh, uh, I named one of mine uh, uh, CMW7 and so you would put put a name right there put a name right there and hit create and we'll create a folder in that within that hard drive just so you can access it you hit uh, save save settings and then you close. I've already created it, so it's good to go. And then you would have that uh, name right here. Now the software on this router is really, really funky. Um, basically, uh, 
uh, it, anytime you reset your router, it's a pain in the butt to get it working again. Basically, what I do is I go in and I delete that folder that I made, what it, the Craig's or CMW um, seven. I'd go in. I'd actually plug the hard drive into my computer and then delete the folder that I created and then plug it uh, plug it back in and go through this process again. But anytime you reset your router, uh, you got to kind of troubleshoot it to get it working again. Like I said, the software on this router is really um, <clears throat> needs to get updated. Uh, but uh, anyway, so again, you would uh, create, share, you'd create a folder, and then that's where that would be. <clears throat> and then after that, you'd save settings. Did the um, now that you were here, let me let me get rid of this because that's the actual um, that right there. Oh crap! iTunes is using it. See, iTunes is using it. Well, let me eject it. Um, so that's pretty cool. But okay, I guess I can do this process. Um, uh, while this is um, while iTunes is going. Um, but basically, um, once you've already created your folder um, on the um, on the website where um, uh, the uh, where you mess with your settings for your router, um, if you have a Mac, you'd hit Command K, and this would come up. Um, you'd hit uh, SMB, and, and uh, this SMB should already show up the colon slash slash, and then you type in your IP address. You hit connect. It would ask you which one you want to do. Oh, I think it's because it's already up. It won't let me pick that one. Anyway, it, yeah, it's already up. So you'd pick which one, you'd hit OK, and it would bring it up. And then once it's up, I actually um, I right click or or uh, if you have a Mac, you know, just the the, the secondary click, whatever they call it. Um, anyway, and then you just put Make Alias, okay, and then it would make that right there. So instead of hitting that command K every time and searching for that IP address, all you got to do is every time you log on, double click that and then it'll bring up your remote hard drive. And then after that, that's what you got. Like I said, the biggest thing with this is um, troubleshooting every time. Like um, if you reset your router, you got to troubleshoot it to get it working again. Um, you just kind of uh, got to go in and delete the folder and then like plug your actual hard drive into your computer, delete the folder, the CMW7 or the Craig's, whatever it is, delete it, and then troubleshoot it again, the actual, um, make going through the whole process again, making the folder, and all that stuff, but once you do, like I said, you can put your iTunes in there, and then you open iTunes, and then you go to iTunes preferences, and then, then you change the path, you change the path, and what you can do to reset your, um, reset your iTunes again, you can go to your movies, and you hit Command A, okay, and delete. You hit Command A, which highlights everything. You hit delete, and it would ask you if you want to keep the files. You'd say yep, and um, also your movies, everything. Delete your whole iTunes library, just keep the files, and then after that, you'd um, you just start adding. Um, you hit File, Add to Library, and then you would go to the um, you would go to that whatever folder iTunes and then you'd hit open and it would add that whole thing in there and it takes a while but but after that you're 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 um off and running remotely and so it won't take up any space on your hard drive it saves a lot of space so that's all I got um that's how to set up a uh um a uh basically a media server or a um a hard drive a remote hard drive uh, I'm sure I'll get a lot of questions on this because um, the software that Linksys uses as far as this goes is, is really not the best <clears throat> because uh, like I said every time you reset your router it's a pain in the butt like kind of getting it going again but I mean really how often do you reset your router you shouldn't have to reset it that much um, I don't but uh, if there's any questions just uh, go ahead and ask me I'll try to answer them um, but just